We need to make the most of what little rain we get and the best way to do that is to keep as much ground cover as possible. We're in a Argyle station which is um, about 180 kilometres west of Burke in far western New South Wales, just east of a small town uh, called Wunaring. We're on a, a 45,000 hectare grazing property. Um, we graze sheep and, and cattle sometimes. Um, predominantly um, red soil country with um, mulga and rosewood trees and, and woolly butt and, um, and never fail and, and um, perennial native species. You can see around us the sort of typical type of country on. Obviously um, soil types change a little bit but um, where we are here is pretty indicative of, of, of how we've got to be able to, to run, run our place and, and, and the level that we've got to keep our ground cover at to, to make the most of the moisture, the little moisture that we get. On the other side of the fence is an area that we can't control. And inside the fence here is an area that we fenced off about three years ago and we're able to move stock in and out and keep them out when, when the, the plants are growing. For us, ground cover's the most important thing. I've been to a lot of grazing courses where they talk about managing your grass and at the time we didn't have any so it was pretty hard to, pretty hard to imagine what it would be like when we've got grass but when you do get grass and you can see what a difference it makes to your landscape and not, not just the look of it but, but how when you get five mils of rain how the ground responds when you've got that ground cover, how the biodiversity in the land changes so much and, and all the different species you get and you can see you stop grazing and getting a lot more benefit out of the, out of the different species. To do that we've had to do a lot of fencing to, to maintain paddocks, the ground cover in them and, and keep the stock out but it's by far and away the most important part of what we're doing is trying to keep as much grass on the ground as we can. And not just the grass but, but leaf and litter and anything to try and get away from bare ground, it's, it's our enemy, I mean it's 90% it's evaporation out here in the summer. Um, and we only get 11 inches so not much is going to grow on an inch so we, we need to make the most of what little rain we get and the best way to do that is to keep as much ground cover as possible. It's not just a um, financial thing either with, with, with having the ground cover, I mean sure your production lifts because you know sheep aren't very good at eating sand but um, it's just things like erosion, um, dust storms, I mean th things as simple as you know, when it is dry and you've got plenty of dust around having to clean troughs out every couple of days because they're full of dust and that sort of thing. So it's, it's a much friendlier environment around here when you've got ground cover around it. And allows even native flora and fauna to, to have a bit of a chance. It all sort of works in together. There's two types of, of, of grazing really that's, that's used out where we are here. There's the conventional set stocking where a certain amount of animals are left in each paddock going on what, what the farmer thinks the stocking rate should be. And there's rotational grazing where we put all our sheep in one mob, or animals, uh, goats if you're owning, or cattle, and, and move them around together. Um, the problem we found with the conventional grazing is that sh sheep being sheep, whenever they see something that's, that looks very palatable, they, they go and nip it off. And if they're doing it all the time, the plants never get a break from the grazing, whereas at least we found that when we're pulling all our stock out of a paddock, if we can leave a bit of grass behind in a paddock, um, we've got about nine to 12 months until our stock are back on it again. And, and in that nine to 12 months, you're gonna get some sort of rain. And if you leave enough body of plant behind, you don't need a hell of a lot of rain to, to get it to really respond. So we're coming back 12 months down the track and, and, and being really surprised at what's grown. And not just the grass, um, but just uh, shrubs as well, edible shrubs, and, and, the, and the diversity of species, which is, which is really pleasing. At the moment, there's probably about 60% uh, being rotationally grazed. We're just about to embark upon another project, um, doing another 35 k's of hinge joint fencing, partly funded by the WCMA, where we're going to chop a bigger section into some smaller paddocks so that we can really get control of the animals in, in, in the system. And that'll get us just about there. We'll, we'll really be able to uh, not so much begin doing it, but, but finish off our, our, our rotational system and, and really be able to to monitor properly and, 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 and we think make a, make a big difference and an improvement on what we've got now. The biggest thing I think that we've had to do here is to understand what plants our stock are eating at what time of year and therefore being able to move them out when we want those plants to grow out of a paddock. Moving stock out at, at, at ground cover percentages works if you're doing the monitoring I mean, and you're doing it all the time because it's fine to say 40% get the stock out but is that 40% of your palatable species? Is it 40% of 
of the species you want to grow there? Is it 40% of your perennials or your annual, annual? So it is a good guide, but it's a guide only. I mean, you, you can't live by it because at certain times you might only want to eat 20% of a certain plant to keep it going. So it's good to have a guide and, and I think 40% should be at the worst end of things. I mean, if you're eating down to 40%, a lot of species out here, you've probably gone a little bit too far, but having said that, it depends what's grazing in as well, whether it's cattle or sheep. So it's probably more important to, to, to worry about getting the grass there and keeping it there as to whether you leave 80, 60, 50, 40%. The annuals only, only grow the once and they and, and then set seed and, and die if, if they're not grazed and, and that's the plants that we get predominantly during the winter. They germinate in the winter, the annuals, whereas the perennials germinate in the summer but the beautiful thing about the perennials is once you get them established, if they've got a fair bit of foliage about them, even in the winter when it's cold, if you get rain, they'll green up and grow. So um, the annuals are pretty handy for, for putting weight on stock but you want your perennials there, they're the most important thing, they hold the ground together, they last through the drought and they'll even grow in the winter so that's, that's what we're chasing. Part of yeah. being funded by the WCMA is that you have to do um, certain amounts of monitoring. A lot of people find it a bit of a chore but we're quite happy to do it because it gets us out there and, and, and makes us have a look at the ground and, and see what's actually happening. Uh, the best thing you can do is, is get out there and, and have a look at what grass species you've got and, and, and see, what, see what's eating them and when and then um, you can calculate how long you want animals to be in your paddock by how much of it they're eating. I mean, if you're, if, if you're trying to get your perennials growing and you've got stock in there and they're eating them down too far, well, you've, you've got to get them out. I mean, they mightn't be touching the annuals, but they might be eating your perennials. So although you might have a lot of annual um, fodder in there, you might have to move the stock out just to get your perennials going. What we tend to do is, uh, mostly through visual monitoring, um, photo points are a fantastic resource to actually You've got a record of when you took the photo and you can look at your, your rainfall chart and see where the rain was and you know the stock numbers you had in the paddock and when you took them out so you can get a fairly good idea of, of what they're eating when and, um, and whether you're leaving too much in behind you in the paddock or, or whether you're taking too much. We tend to try and work out three or four months down the track how much feed we've got in front of our sheep so we can get a bit of an indication as to when we should be getting rid of them and obviously if you get decent rain in between you have to go out and reassess on the ground again. It's just monitoring I mean you can't you can't do it from sitting in a ute driving down the road and you can't do it from in the house. You've got to get out and, and, and get on the ground and, and really just make it your business to know what's happening on the ground and um, how much ground cover you've got. You really want it to, to have got back to about 75% of, of what it's going to grow to before you put stock back in there. That's about what you're aiming for. It depends on the species of course, but, but when, when, you, when you're getting it up to that sort of, that sort of height, the plant's pretty, getting pretty close to being ready to shut down anyway so let it go as long as you can and then use it before before it becomes rank and, and gets wasted. 